this uh, from a different approach. Uh, I'm coming from a, from a more personal approach and sort of looking at a life that I've lived and what's happened in my background, trying to understand who I was and how I got through this life and some of the things I've learned. And basically, what I'm going to take you through tonight is sort of a look at a model, sort of a case study of a, of a company that I founded that went to the top, was a, was a number one company, did great, and then ultimately went out of business. Went through a lot of money, had a great product, but a lot of the things that uh, the Eve was talking about <clears throat> got violated along the way. It was a company that I founded, I had a great idea for it, and I got the idea based on some things I had done. And if you look at my background, you'll see that I went from <clears throat> basically a mega company, IBM. I started IBM as a programmer. Um, I was at, uh, I went to San Jose State, got a degree in mathematics, went to Berkeley, uh, met a guy up there that said, hey, you got great aptitude for programming. I went there to be a lawyer, which I'd have made, I'd have been a rotten lawyer, but I turned out to be a pretty good programmer. And actually went to work for IBM, and IBM at that time was 75% of the market. So when you said IBM and computers, that's all there was. There was no competition. There was a company that dominated the marketplace. And you say, now how could an entrepreneur be part of a company like IBM? Um, well, I didn't realize what, who I was at the time, so I, got, so I went through the company. T.J. Watson was the CEO. He was the co His father founded the company, and he basically was the guy that was really in charge of the company. Dr. Anderson, who I worked for, was one of the co-founders of the, of the Winchester Disk Drive and a brilliant man who ran the research department of, of, uh, of IBM. And I worked shortly for a guy named Al Shugart, who started some companies here in Silicon Valley. And basically, what I, what I got interested in when I was working at IBM is understanding IBM probably had the best business structure, the best business process in the world. IBM was a great company to work for. They respected people, they were non-union, and they were a great place to work for. But I used to have problems thinking about what am I, what am I doing? I'm caught in this massive company, and I have these other ideas about who I am. I then one day got frustrated with IBM and picked up the phone and called a guy named Andy Grove, thinking that Intel was a startup, because IBM was this massive company, and in Silicon Valley there was this little company called Intel. I said, wow, I don't want to go to work for this startup. So I called Andy Grove, Andy said, come over and meet with me. I went and met with them, um, and basically I was hired about three weeks later. I went to work for Intel. This is great. I'm going to run in this shop here in Santa Clara Valley. It's a great place to work. And lo and behold, it was not a startup. And lo and behold, Intel was a man could have been General Motors. It was a manufacturing company for technology. I thought it was some innovative company, but basically it was a, it was a manufacturing company for technology. Andy Grove was a great guy. I didn't like him. I didn't like working for him. It wasn't my kind of guy, but I learned. I learned that it was my first step out of the mega company to another company that maybe there was something there to where I should go. There was a company here in Silicon Valley called Eagle Computer. It was a company in Las Gatis. The founder went public and that day rent, took a Ferrari, tipped it over and killed himself. I had, a, I had an offer letter. He was a good friend of mine at IBM. I had an offer letter to go to work for him. And I was going in to resign that afternoon and happened to hear a broadcast on radio about one in the afternoon about this guy getting killed. The company went, got delisted the next day and went out of business. I was somewhat depressed and I was just sitting in a restaurant in Los Gatos called Pedro's. And while I'm sitting in the restaurant, there's a guy at the bar dressed in Levi's, a white t-shirt. I'm sitting there and we get talking. And like, what? He says, I have this computer company. I said, really? What is it? This guy is 25 years old. <laughs> I said, that was very unusual in Silicon Valley in those days. You meet a 25-year-old in, in a restaurant, start talking computers. He said, I have a company called Apple Computer. I said, I never heard of it. And he said, where do you want some Intel? I said, see, you should come work for me. I said, I don't even know you. And he said, plus, you're a lot younger than I am, so I'm not sure I could ever even work with you anyway. So he said, no, I think I like you. I think you should work for me. So one thing led me there. I'm not going to go the whole story, but it was very interesting the way he recruited me. But then eventually I went to work for Steve. So then I went to... So I started in Apple in 1980. Um, my first day in the job was a Saturday. And he said, "Come, I'm going up, we're driving up to Xerox Park. There's something I want to show you. So we go up to Xerox Park, and there was a system called the Star System, which everybody now knows today as Windows and Mac and everything else. It had a mouse, it had icons, it had everything there. And it was connected to a massive printer. So at the end of this big printer was a workstation with a screen and a keyboard and a mouse. And you're, you're controlling this printer off this, off this device. And we said, wow, that's really amazing. It was like 
this could be a product, it would be the right thing to be a product in the marketplace. So basically that was the beginning of, of Macintosh. Then along the way I worked with John Scully and ultimately Bill Campbell. I left Apple in uh, 1987. Um, as they said, I left feet first because I got thrown out by John Scully. Steve got thrown out a year earlier, and I should have left then. The handwriting was on the wall that things were changing at Apple. And I got thrown out. And since that time, I have been wandering the, the streets of startups. So I've been, and I went off, took a whole different direction, and started, got into the entertainment industry. It was like, because that was a passion of mine. I love entertainment. It was sort of a passion of mine to get involved in entertainment. And basically, I produced a movie called Berkeley in the 60s which was nominated for the Academy Award in 1990. Interesting thing about that, we'll get into later, I lost my butt on that movie, never made a dime, because I didn't understand that business at all. I thought I was Mr. Bright, and I thought I understood everything, and I could go into a different business and understand it, but I didn't. Um, and then, then I started a company, which we're going to talk about today, called Nego Software. So the, so the approach I'm going to take is to take sort of a case study and then today I'm actually have a new startup called RocketStream. It's a internet software acceleration company. By the way, if anybody has any questions, interrupt me at any time. I think that being an entrepreneur um, basically is to basically understand who you are.